Mosquito. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled Sabotage Incorporated. Throughout the country, foreign spies and saboteurs are busy trying to prevent the shipment of war munitions to countries with whom their native country is at war. New York City is located Explosives Incorporated, one of the largest manufacturers of munitions in the country. Every night, trainloads of munitions leave their factory for some secret destination. As our story opens, Officer Manigan and Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, are investigating a mysterious telephone call from Wentworth B. Charles, president of Explosives Incorporated, who lives at the Monaco apartment. Well, here we are at Charles' apartment. Push the button, Danny. There's no answer. Well, let's break in the door. Now, we'd better call the superintendent. He'll have a pass key. Is something wrong, officer? Uh, who are you? I'm the superintendent of this building. Oh, well, uh, we got a mysterious telephone call from Mr. Charles, which he didn't finish. It was of such a nature that we felt it necessary to make an investigation. He doesn't answer his bell or our knocking. Well, I have a pass key here. I'll unlock the door for it. Something holding the door shut. Hey, come on, and we'll break it in. No, 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 wait. I'll telephone the owner of the apartment house. He'll... Uh... Uh, well, we can't wait for that. Uh, come on, Johnny, let's break in the door. All right, here we go. Uh... Uh, well, uh, uh, well there's, there's nobody here. Look in the uh, bedroom there. Okay, I'll have a look. I hope nothing happened to Mr. Charles. He's one of our best tenants. Hey, Johnny. Look. Here's Mr. Charge and his... What is it, Mike? Hmm. Is he dead? I think so. Look. There. Over his heart. A wound. Yeah. Right through his pajamas. A twenty-two bullet. Uh, I'd bet. Oh? Uh, no, it's a stab wound. Uh, it's Mr. Charles, all right. Is he dead? Yes. Who could have done it? That's what the police would like to know. And that's what we have to find out. Well, I, I don't see any weapon. Look for a nice pick or a thin stiletto. Okay, I'll have a look around the apartment. Hadn't I better telephone the owner of the building? Not yet, and don't leave the apartment. Yes, but whose apartment adjoins this on the bedroom side? Uh, Professor Vladimir Deniskius. What's his business? I believe he lectures on anthropology. Hmm. Does he uh, live alone? He has a male secretary who lives with him, I believe. Who lives on the other side, next to the living room? Oh, that apartment is vacant. Did Mr. Charles live alone? Yes. Apparently, Mr. Charles was killed while he was phoning. The receiver is still off the hook there, and his body is lying in front of the telephone table. Yes, it looks that way. Well, say, I can't find any sign of a dagger or ice pick anywhere. There's an electric ice box in the kitchen, so I don't think Mr. Charles would be needing an ice pick himself. What about the windows? They're all locked. Any fire escape? Nope. It's a 14-story drop to the street on all sides. How many uh, floors above this, Superintendent? Uh, Fifteen. Hmm. Any uh, other entrances to this apartment? Only a service door in the kitchen. Yeah, I, I, I looked at that. It's locked and boarded from the inside, and there's no knob on the outside of the door. Well, Mike, you'd better phone the coroner. I'll just have a look around the apartment, and then I'd like to question the professor and his secretary. Maybe they can throw some light on this case. Oh, uh, good evening, Professor. Uh, good evening. And 
What can I do for you? Uh, this officer would like to ask you some questions. There's uh, been some trouble next door, and the police are interested in getting some information. Well, won't you come in, please? Thanks. Now, what is it you would like to know, officer? I am sure I cannot be of any assistance to you. Did you uh, hear any commotion or unusual noise tonight in Mr. Charles' apartment? No. No, nothing. In fact, I've been so busy with my studies that I doubt if I would have heard any noise coming from anywhere. When I am doing my uh, research work, I concentrate very deeply. Do you have any children, Professor? Me? Oh, oh no. No, officer. I, I am not married. That uh, gun there. Do you use that in your research? Oh, that. Uh, that belongs to my secretary. He is off tonight. He bought it for his little boy. It is an air rifle. Hardly strong enough to... To what? I mean, it uh, has the appearance of a real gun, but it would be no good for hunting game other than small birds, I assure you. Uh, here, uh, have a look. Mm, yes, yes, I can see you're right. I presume a BB shot from this air rifle would hardly have enough force behind it to kill a man. Kill a man? Has someone been killed? Yes, Professor. Mr. Charles, your next-door neighbor, was murdered less than an hour ago. You know, Danny, uh, this case is very, very puzzling. Very, Doc. But the Blue Beetle's going to solve the puzzle. Uh, how? I'm going to revisit the Charles apartment alone and do a little private investigating. Danny, what do you think is back of this murder? Mm, sabotage of some sort. I'm positive it has something to do with a train of munitions and guns being shipped to Canada. Well, be careful, Danny boy. If your suspicions are correct, you'll run into a ruthless gang of murderers. I know that. But the Blue Beetle can handle them. Have you everything you need? Mm-hmm. This Blue Beetle chain armor and mask, my magic ray and spotlight are all I'll need tonight. I'm traveling light because I've got to travel fast. The Blue Beetle's going to solve a murder and strike a blow for humanity. bedroom. The body's been removed, but nothing else has been disturbed in the bedroom here. Hmm. That picture on the wall there, facing the spot where Charles was sitting when he was killed. It doesn't hang straight. I'll have a look. You understand what I mean? Uh, a hole in the wall back of the picture, just large enough for a rifle barrel and to hear conversation. Now, here... Here is the railroad map again. Yes, I see. The munition train will approach a bridge to Canada over the gorge along this track here. Yeah. Uh, now, our major plan is to blow up the bridge as the munition train is passing over. But if for some reason our men are unable to place the charge of explosives under the bridge, our ultimate plan is to wreck the train and block the entrance in the entire road as well as destroy the munitions aboard the train. Well, how will we know in advance which plan to follow? Mm, I'm expecting a call any minute from our leaders at Rosno, near the border. Then as soon as you get word, I'll be on my way. Yes. Your job is to take care of any guards at the American side of the bridge. Yes, I understand. This will take care of them. Oh, the air pistol that shoots glass pellets filled with suffocating gas, huh? Yes. It makes very little noise. Whoever is shot with it remains unconscious for a long, long time. Oh, good. Now, there are two planes tuned up and waiting out of the Lavrage airfield. You take one of them. All right. And uh, you're sure no one suspects our plot? Positive, positive. I liquidated Charles before he could telephone the police. Well, what about money? Here. Now, here is $1,000 for expenses. Okay. When the job is done, there'll be plenty more where this came from. Good. Hello? Yes? You what? Yes. Yes, we're ready at this end. Ah, wait. Here, here's Igor now. Just a minute. I, I'll ask him. Well? What about it, Igor? The munition train is loaded and will pull out for Canada in ten minutes. Ah, uh, hello. Ronaldo. Igor informs me that the train will pull out in ten minutes. Yes, all right. Everything is moving smoothly. We'll be with you soon. Goodbye. 
Where's that? Where? I can't imagine what that could... That, that's the blue beetle. Yes, the blue beetle. And he's going to nip. You have an ingenious method of entering, Mr. Blue Beetle. Did you by any chance fly to my window? And just what do you want? I overheard your whole plot from the next apartment and crawled along the ledge outside the window. Then he knows... Everything. And I'm going to turn you over to the police. All of you. Get away from that phone, Professor, or I'll burn you with my magic ray. Oh, no, you won't, Blue Beetle, because you won't be able Put to. Put down that gun. Oh, Mickey. There. That'll fix Mr. Blue Beetle. Uh, let us get out of here. The gas is making me sick. And what about the Blue Beetle? He'll tie him up and take him down to the freight yard and put him aboard the munition train. The Blue Beetle will have a rude awakening sometime in the early morning hours. <laughs> What will happen to the Blue Beetle now? How soon will he recover from the effects of the suffocating gas? Can he save the shipment of munitions to Canada from destruction? Which plan will the saboteurs put into effect? These questions will be answered in the next episode of the Blue Beetle. <laughs> copyrighted box feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.